Uh, welcome to Tag Demo, and uh, basically we had some problems in the previous uh, session. Hope it will not happen again. And let's jump directly to details. Okay, uh, let's dive into Tag. A really, really brief introduction about Tag. Uh, as you said, as you say uh, during the presentation yesterday, Tag is a Python on a client. And basically, um, I will walk to some of the most uh, uh, important and interesting options uh, you uh, can use while analyzing uh, malicious websites. In particular, uh, the most important options are bold, and I will go uh, to each of them. First of all, uh, the user agent. As I was saying during the presentation yesterday, the user agent is really key. Uh, for uh, analyzing the malicious website for the really simple reason that ExploitKit usually check uh, the version of the browser which is currently serving them and uh, basically they serve different contents depending on the browser version. Uh, so basically uh, a proper on a client implementation, a proper low interaction on a client because if we talk about the high interaction on a client that's a completely a different story. Uh, but uh, if we talk about low interaction on a client, uh, uh, we should uh, absolutely implement something which allows us to switch the user agent version. Another important option is the referral. Um, the referral is important in the real world. Uh, it will be not important in the examples we'll analyze today. Uh, it's important in the real world because basically uh, when uh, a browser uh, surfaces a URL, for example, the URL could be advertised to a spam mail or something like that, uh, the browser is usually uh, redirected in a chain of redirection so uh, to different URLs and it finally it finally arrives to the real uh, to the real page, to the real malicious page. And basically, uh, almost all the exploit kit out there uh, check the refer in order to verify that you are arriving by the correct uh, redirection chain and you are not targeting the URL directly, uh, which could be a symptom of the fact that uh, it's an automatic system and probably there's a researcher behind it. Uh, another useful option is the proxy, which allows you to um, you use basically a proxy for surfing. Uh, uh, you can even think uh, using it for uh, basically uh, tunneling your analysis to Tor. Uh, I have to advise you that uh, it is really not so effective nowadays because basically uh, the bad guys are filtering Tor nowadays. An other useful option could be, for example, the verbose mode if you want to see what is really going on. These are really useful options. Uh, in particular, the, the, the options about plugins. Uh, because basically, uh, the exploit kit are meant to serve a different kind of exploit, not only depending on the browser version, but more and more depending on the plugin version. Uh, nowadays, it's really important, for example, the Java version. Um, and in particular, uh, we'll see in uh, the next example that you can easily change this version to simply uh, using a switch. For example, for changing uh, the Adobe Acrobat Reader version or for disabling it completely if you want. These are all the browser personalities with our support. And uh, first of all, I would like to start with a really basic example, which is about Plugin Detect. Plugin Detect is a JavaScript library which uh, uh, detects uh, not only uh, the browser version, but even the plugin version. And it is intended to, to work with all the major browsers out there. Uh, it turned to be famous in the malicious world because the author of Black Hole Kit, uh, Black Hole Exploit Kit Punch, integrated it into uh, Black Hole and uh, it was used in order to fingerprint your browser, fingerprint all your plugins and to serve you the correct exploit for each of the vulnerabilities which are on your system. And I would like to show you I 
I'm using here a local execution. Uh, sorry. Okay, as you can see here, uh, there's a lot of output which is really useless. Um, as you can see here, um, this is the, the original version of plugin detect. We are running tag, uh, the, um, the switch hu minus hull uh, is useful if you want to analyze a local file. So basically, you can, uh, I, I use it to, for testing every day, but you can basically uh, play, for example, with the samples which are provided uh, and uh, uh, in order to understand how the things work. But basically, uh, this first example is useful for me in order to show you that uh, um, plugin detect in, is in this case fooled. And uh, it thinks that uh, we are currently running an uh, Adobe Acrobat PDF Reader with 9.1.0. At uh, the same time, for example, um, plugin detect thinks that we are running Shockwave Flash and this is the current version. Or we can see no. that it thinks that uh, the current version of Java, which is installed on this system, uh, plugin detect fix it is a real system in one dot six dot zero dot thirty two. I would like to show you just one thing. If you take a look, oh. uh -huh. if you take a look at the default version which are emulated, you can see that these are exactly what we saw. Okay, let's try changing something. Let's try emulating a different version of Adobe. Okay. I'm trying to emulate a version which does not exist at all, 20.0.1, and let's see what is the output. You can see that the plugin detector is completely fooled. So, at this point, we are able to, uh, to fool plugin detect, uh, and so basically, uh, to make a, a website think that we are running a particular version of Adobe, particular version of Shockwave, particular version of Java. It tends to be really useful if you are analyzing specific exploit which target a specific version. And so this guarantees you a lot of flexibility because uh, basically uh, if you are analyzing a, an exploit for a specific version, you just change this particular switch or similar one and you can run your tests. And obviously this possibility doesn't exist in the eye interaction world. After this example, I would like to show you uh, some more realistic ones. The first one is about the MDAC exploit, uh, which is famous. Uh, it was an exploit which was widely used uh, against the Internet Explorer 6. And uh, it basically uses uh, some ActiveX control in order to um, to download an executable and to execute it. Let's run it and then I'll command the output. This is a remote URL I've prepared for for today. As you can see in the first lines, uh, some ActiveX objects are created. You can see, for example, in the fourth line, Microsoft MDAC RDS Data Space ActiveX create object. Uh, so basically, uh, the exploit is creating three objects, which are uh, Guscript shell, which is created twice, and Adobe Adu stream. And after that, uh, it creates a new one, which is Microsoft XML HTTP, and it uses it to open that particular URL and uh, to fetch the executable which is saved here, <coughs> and then, uh, uh, where is it? Okay, 
uh, to the AdoDB stream matrix. Uh, it is saved to this particular file and then it is executed to this other activix. So basically, uh, there was the uh, three activix control which were used in order to, to, to get this, uh, this action, to, to, to be able to uh, save the executable uh, and uh, um, after saving it in this particular directory, execute it. Uh, this was a really valuable exploit for Internet Explorer 6, really valuable. Uh, if you take a look, for example, at Metasploit uh, exploit, you can see that this exploit is one of the few which is classified as excellent, because basically uh, it worked uh, really in a greed way. Uh, as you can see, Tide is able to emulate everything, and it does it to its own Activix uh, uh, layer. I implemented an Activix uh, on my home in order to do it. And so basically I'm able to create objects, I'm able to emulate the methods uh, and even the attributes sometimes uh, which this object provides. And basically uh, all, that, all the things that you are seeing here are not real. Uh, everything is emulated. So basically there is no risk for you to be compromised or something like that. And uh, you can see that the file is saved in this, um, in this directory. And I would like to show you some things uh, which are saved, which are stored here. <coughs> so. Okay, basically, there is uh, one directory which is analysis, and in the analysis directory you can find some uh, subheres which are analysis.json, where you can find all the details about the analysis in JSON format. I'll show you some snippets here yesterday. And uh, another format which is uh, MASC 1.1, uh, which is for MITRE, but uh, it, it's less interesting and now. You can see that uh, all the um, all the resources which are fetched remotely are saved for later analysis. For example, um, here the the idea is to save them based on the MIME type. So basically, the, the the page which serves the exploit is served as text HTML, and so it is saved in this directory. Here you can find the code uh, which uh, basically exploit the uh, the vulnerability. And here you can see application up to stream, and this is basically the executable which was saved. So if we that's the executable. So basically, this is a real simple example, a really simple example. But uh, there are obviously in the real world the situation is much more complicated. So you may have, have uh, a lot of files which are saved, some executable, some jars, some PDFs, or something like that. The different pages, for example, if you pass to redirection chains or something like that. Uh, basically, all the information are stored here uh, in this directory. Graph.svg is the exploit graph. Uh, I show you an example uh, during the presentation yesterday. In this case, it, it's not so interesting because basically we are hitting directly a URL, and so you, you'll find the two boxes connected. So not interesting at all. Um, I would like to show you before finishing just a last example. And this is one of the latest feature of TAG. Basically, this page uh, is serving us a PDF exploit. And uh, uh, until one month ago, you would not have seen these lines about Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, the output would have been just this one and this one. Now, as you can see, there is an analysis of the PDF which is downloaded, and so basically some basic information are provided, for example, about suspicious triggers like Echoform, OpenAction, and the object where they are. 
suspicious actions, for example, and you can see that there are very detailed information about the exploit is trying to uh, the, the vulnerability is trying to exploit. Um, this code is currently work in progress. Uh, basic idea is to emulate even the exploit in the PDF. I'm currently working with Osaniga uh, Vespasa, which is the author of PDF and which is a member of the Internet Project, in order to extend it, in order to have it, uh, because I would like to um, to be able to fetch the executable, if possible, even at this stage, uh, basically completing the analysis. Uh, for your information, I'm currently uh, doing the same work even for uh, a malicious Android application because there are, there are some exploits which have started serving uh, malicious Android applications and I'm currently uh, integrating even a Java sandbox for making the same, the same kind of analysis even on malicious Thank you for the attention.